Hi everyone, I'm Ruben, and I'm here to talk to you about connections. And where this really starts is we think that in order for data to be useful, it needs to be complete. And that means you should be able to view your entire data estate and really trace and orchestrate your data all the way from the sources where that data comes in through to the exposures where your data is kind of consumed across the business. And that also means that you should be able to bring DBT Cloud to wherever your data is stored, whether that's in Snowflake or Azure or anywhere else. And so I'm really excited to talk you through some of the exciting innovations that the team has been building that make all of this possible across DBT Cloud. And where this really begins is in the DAG. And so we believe that the DAG is sort of the heart and soul of what makes all of those data workflows possible and in creating that view of the data dependencies and the lineage and the relevant context is really what allows you to build those powerful transformations that feed data across your business. But we also know that there's always room to improve the usefulness of the DAG and that all of these uh, models you're building across staging, MART, and FACT models really inform uh, some sort of team or decision or downstream dashboard. And that in order to kind of extend the lineage of the DAG, we really want to show you that important context on the right of what dashboards and how often and uh, who they're used by. And so with that in mind, uh, we launched exposures a couple of years back. And these have been really useful in sort of linking those uh, models that are producing the data uh, through to the places that data is used. And so whether that's an AI or ML model or an operations workflow or a, a downstream Tableau dashboard, these really allow you to link up uh, those models to the places that data is consumed. But we've also had some feedback on these exposures, right? We know that they're a little manual in that you really have to know uh, where and how the data is being used in order to link it up to that model, that you can't really use them to make sure your data is always fresh by actively triggering things based on these exposures. And that if you go and create a new dashboard or add an existing one, there's some reconfiguration required uh, to go and either edit that exposure directly or go and add a new one. And so really, you will know that this data is driving a whole bunch of dashboards and extracts and powering data across the business, but it's really hard to know where to start to understand how that data is actually being used and who's actually using that data without going through all of those exposures one by one. And so this is the problem that the team and I were really excited to help solve. And I'm really excited to introduce the idea of active exposures. And so what these are is really a direct integration from DVT Cloud through to the place where your data is being consumed, uh, starting with the beta in Tableau uh, in mid-July with Power BI being the next one we tackle. And what these really allow you to do is connect through to the place where that data is being consumed and bring th uh, through automatically all of the exposures and then allow us to figure out uh, which models are using them and how you can use that across DBT Cloud. And then in using that, there's really three areas we think it can be really powerful. It's first of all, in providing that end-to-end -end visibility, which I know Cam is gonna get into some more uh, with Explore, but really about understanding how can we understand better uh, which models are being consumed most by the business and which are powering which use cases so that you invest your time and effort and money in the places that will have the biggest impact. In orchestration, what we really want to allow you to do is ensure that those dashboards always reflect the latest data by having those update uh, based on when your models are finished processing. And then finally, in CI, uh, we, really want to, we really want to allow you to see the impact uh, of those model changes on those downstream dashboards where the data is being consumed. And so when you go to make a change, you'll know automatically like, is the CFO's dashboard or your company's revenue uh, potentially gonna be directly affected by the code change you're making? 
and allow you to do all of this across your DBT projects automatically. And so without further ado, let's jump into a demo um, in our prototype. And so, yeah, jumping into our prototype here, you can kind of see uh, we want to help out uh, Grace and Mr. Wonka and team a little with their Wonka analytics and really understand uh, through all those models they're creating, how is that actually being consumed uh, across the Wonka business? And so to start out with, uh, we can jump in and configure our Tableau integration. And so um, adding the server URL and the token value is going to allow us to automatically uh, sync through the Tableau and pull through all of those exposures. And so hitting continue there, we can kind of see um, what are all the collections that we have in our Tableau environment with the idea that, you know, maybe there's a thousand different um, exposures there, but we're not going to want to bring through uh, anything in Wonka's personal collection, anything highly experimental, because these are subject to change and are not really things that are really yet to show in our DAG lineage view. And, introduce unnecessary sort of clutter to our overall analytics. And so we can go and save that configuration and then jumping through, kind of see that end-to-end -end lineage and understand uh, not just what are sort of our fact and dimension tables, but also like what are the downstream exposures that are powering those fact and dimension tables. And so we can see that those fact customer orders and those fact marketing campaigns are actually being used uh, anywhere from Wonka 360 through our marketing campaign spend and our waterfall monitoring. And so now that we have those exposures are automatically being brought into DBT Cloud, the next thing we want to think through is how can I um, have my models then go and trigger those exposures so they can always be up to date as soon as my data is fresh. And so if we jump back to production here, we can then go into our new syncs tab. I see we don't have anything set up at the moment, so we'll go and create a new sync. And in that new sync, uh, we're going to call this Tableau on Merge. We're going to uh, sync and refresh our Tableau dashboards. We can set this to uh, run on model update. So it'll automatically refresh these connected dashboards whenever the models are updated. And then we can throttle these updates so that if these have already been updated in the past hour, we're not going to simply go and update them again. And so scrolling down a little bit, we can select sort of what are the most important collections, sorry, what are the most important dashboards we want to actually refresh in the selection rate. And so we might want to select our Wonka 360 as well, and perhaps that fudge mellow sales tracking. And then uh, whenever these models that power these dashboards are updated, we'll save this configuration so that these um, underlying extracts, which then power the dashboards, are going to be updated at the same time. Now that we have this new sync set up, we can go through to our sync and we can go see that the sync has been running successfully. And then we can go into our exposures and look at the status of all those things that we've actually asked it to update. And so we see that Wonka 360 was successful. We see uh, there's perhaps a warning on our order tracking we should investigate. And we see that error on the golden ticket winners, which, you know, given the trouble Mr. Wonka was having earlier, uh, with Charlie Bucket and, you know, some of those golden ticket win winners, it makes sense that we can now reflect uh, the problems we're having in our data through to the place where that data is then being consumed. Finally, the um, part we're really excited to build is this view of as you go and make these code changes, as Grace kind of showed us in advanced CI, uh, where are the, what are the dashboards that are connected uh, to the code changes that might be impacted. And so if we jump back to production and then go down to our CI job, we can jump to this CI job and then uh, in addition to this advanced CI, also see uh, what are the potential downstream impacts of the places where this data is being consumed. And so, yeah, we're really excited to bring you this with automatic exposures, starting with Tableau, uh, with Power BI to follow after that. And we really think this will provide a way of bringing in that downstream context and really expanding that end-to-end -end lineage of that so important DAG. To give you uh, a bit of a teaser on what we're working on next, 
Um, when we think about sort of that end-to-end -end lineage and providing those end-to-end -end orchestration capabilities, we also know we have room to improve uh, in the active sources. And so we know a lot of people really just want their data as soon as it's fresh, right? And so as soon as uh, those sources have finished syncing, you really want to go through and be able to run uh, all of your models downstream from those sources. And so um, there's really two ways people do that at the moment. The first is by in taking a time-based guess, right? And so if you know your sources are usually ready by 9 a.m., then you can set a 9.30 job to go and run. And nine times out of 10, that works really well. And on that 10th time, where perhaps there's an error overnight, right? And your sources didn't update, you end up with stale data across the business. And hopefully you figure that out before someone in the business does. Sort of that second way is you can say, I want my data to always be fresh. And so I'm going to run a job every hour. And that works really well when you have small data. But as your data gets bigger and your data warehouse gets bigger, you're kind of using a lot of unnecessary compute to go and run that same job every hour, even when the data may not have changed in between. And so what we really want to do is bring uh, that active source context into your orchestration so that you can go and look at the last time those sources actually did refresh and then use that with conditional logic to say, only go and run my downstream jobs uh, when my source data has been updated. And so we're really excited to talk some more about this in the coming months after we finish building uh, those automatic exposures. I guess moving on to another uh, really exciting development in connections. When we think about the concept of connections, it's important to not only bring more data to DBT, but also to bring DBT to wherever it is your data lives. And so last fall, we, allowed, we launched Microsoft Adapters for DBT Cloud. And we're excited to kind of build on that momentum and all the feedback we've heard from the Microsoft community in bringing the Azure Synapse adapter, which is now in preview uh, to dbt, and then moving our Microsoft Fabric adapter to GA. And we already have hundreds of customers that are using dbt Fabric in dbt Cloud, and we're excited to build even more connections with the launch of Synapse. And in order to go and set this up, all you really need to do is uh, go and create a new project and then select either Synapse or Fabric uh, as your data warehouse. Finally, in connections, we want to talk a bit about the ways we allow users to connect into DBT Cloud uh, with the launch of Databricks OAuth. And so we originally introduced this last October, and we're excited to announce that it's now in GA. And so uh, DBT Cloud really supports developers with OAuth with Databricks by providing that additional layer of enterprise security to all of DBT's users. And when you enable Databricks OAuth for a DBT Cloud project, uh, all of your DBT developers will authenticate directly with Databricks in order to use the Cloud IDE. And this kind of removes the need to manage any credentials in DBT Cloud. And so with this addition, um, we now bring uh, authentication via OAuth uh, to Snowflake, BigQuery, and Databricks. And we look forward to continuing adding to this list.